Today, I'm going to share with you 10 tips that I've learned in my 12 year career as a designer to take your websites to a more award-winning level type of quality. Let's go. Hello, my friend. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Adrian Somoza and I focus on helping talented freelance web designers grow their talent, but more importantly, charge what they are worth. Before we dive in, if you want to give structure to your designs, make sure to download my free Golden Canon Grid course. It's helped over 10,000 designers build more beautiful structured websites. And if you're an independent web designer with at least one year into the business and you're tired of second guessing yourself, feeling you're not good enough to increase your prices and charge premium rates, or just wondering if you're even moving in the right direction, then my friend, it's time to stop trying to figure it out all alone. That's why I created a mentorship program called the Bone Club. This is where talented freelance web designers build six-figure businesses, create work they are proud of, and reclaim their creative freedom. So if that's the kind of future you envision for your business, book a one-to-one -one strategy call with me and we'll map out your next steps and see if the Pong Club is a fit for you. Having said that, let's dive in. Tip number one, be minimal. Okay, so one option that you can go with is being minimal with your typographic choices, meaning choose few sizes and few typefaces and few variables within those typefaces. So for example, Ben Mingo uses very few typefaces and very few sizes. In his website, he uses one typeface and he uses one size. Actually, he uses two sizes for the whole website, okay? Now, if you go to select it, you will see, right? There's just images and the small text over here. And okay, if we take a look at the about page, then we can see a third and a fourth size, okay? So one, two, three, four sizes but he still uses the same type of typeface like the legends of design for example massimo vignelli or theater rams okay so that's one way to look at it be minimal now the other option is be bold okay now if you're bold be really bold okay now let's take a look at angela torres work. Now, Angelo Torres is a an ex-colleague that I'm super proud that he recently joined the Bone Club and his work is outstanding. I worked with him with a couple of projects and it was a blast to work with him because he has a very good eye for aesthetics. And if you take a look at this, right, how many typefaces did he use for his website? one, two, three, four, right? At the very least, we can see on the hero four typefaces used at the same time and combined. Now, he combined them very, very well, but it works. Why does it work? Because, for example, when they change from one typeface to the next, they are contrasting. So here, from this title to this one, Angelo contrasted the color, the size, the typeface, and the style of typeface. So he went from a sans serif to a serif, from uppercase to lowercase, from one color to the next, right? So many things are in contrast between these two pieces of text, which makes them work really well together. The next piece of text that I want to talk about is this one, right? It's pink, so yet another color. It's another typeface. It's a sans serif. So he goes from sans serif to serif to sans serif again, okay? And he goes from somewhat big to medium to small to huge, okay? So see how he's contrasting the typefaces and being very bold with his decisions. There's no middle ground here. <laughs> it's all in or nothing, okay? Tip number four is adjust letter spacing 
optically okay so the bigger the typography the tighter the letter spacing and vice versa and the bolder the typeface the tighter the letter spacing and vice versa so here we have a light typeface that needs plus one in letter spacing but the same typeface once it gets bolder you need a tighter letter spacing and once you go bolder and bigger you need even a tighter letter spacing okay this is based on the gestalt law of proximity we want things to be seen as part of the same thing and if we start adding here letter spacing in between the characters all of a sudden the space between the words starts to compete with the white space between the characters okay so it starts to become a little bit more messy to read so that's why we want to tighten up the letter spacing here so that we can group words together so that was three actually not four and then number four is adjust line height optically okay so what I see many designers do is they adjust mathematically so let's say that they have 48 pixels then they say for example okay it's 48 plus 1.5 or sorry times 1.5 and that gives us 72 okay great and so they just do a mathematical formula to set the line height now that can help as a guideline but it won't help you in all cases in this case for example we have the space between the margin and the text is 40 pixels. Now, if we do that rule, right, the space between one line and the next one is going to be even more than 40 pixels because I would count this X height as the one that counts for the height between one line and the next. Visually, that's, that's where the line breaks, okay? So, like, if I remove this, the law of proximity doesn't work here, right? Because we have more space between the lines than between here. So we want to have less space between these two lines. So let's remove this and do, for example, 54. So now we have less space. Let's let me put, bring this back here and let, let me show you here, right? So you want to reduce here. The spacing between the lines optically so that the law of proximity works right and works at your favor and this line and these two lines are seen as one group of text rather than two separate lines okay next is iterate more okay so you will see that you know for this design I started here and I started throwing like the elements on the page and started slowly adding things, right? And iterating and iterating and trying something new and adding the 2023, 20, <laughs> because I did it in 2023, right? And adding things here and trying things here, right? So you can see that there were many iterations to get to the final result, which is this one, okay? So you wanna iterate, don't marry with the first layout that you did, with the first typographic size that you tried, with the first typeface that you chose, right? Try different combos, try different sizes. Look how for it, from this one to this one, I increased the hierarchy, right, of the main title. So try different things don't marry with the first try or the first attempts tip number six is use type scales okay a uh, very common mistake of beginners is they kind of scale the typeface freely until they find the size that they like right and it ends up being a random number here a random line height and the random letter spacing now you want to do what you want to do actually is pick a size from a scale okay I like to use the scale that I have here right in the program because it just saves me time and it doesn't really matter if it's 48 or if it's gonna be 50 or 50.1 like there's absolutely no difference so it's much easier for me to just pick one from the scale and that's it okay tip number seven skip 
multiple weights okay now you've heard Christo and other people say skip weights which I do agree okay now what I want you to think is that one weight is not enough and even two weights might not be enough skip multiple weights okay so for this example I used a thin and a bold variable thin and bold I skipped three weights not one not two okay I skipped three and went to the fourth one okay now if I do the same thing but with just one skip here from regular to bold you can see that the contrast here is very subtle it's almost unnoticeable so you want to make sure that your contrast is very very noticeable here even up to medium could work but from regular and below it doesn't work you see you want to be very bold so I would just go with the boldest I can go all right now if you're enjoying this make sure that you grab the free golden canon grid course and join 10,000s of students in learning the five secrets to design beautiful websites with the golden canon grid now let's get to tip number eight tip number eight is avoid italics in sans serif let's emphasize here a word right like you can see here that I emphasized a word with italic so you can see that it doesn't really work now it's another thing if I use for example a serif and I match the X height here and I adjust here a little bit the letter spacing right that's another thing that works a little bit better I'm not a fan of that one maybe this is a better one better example it's a whole different thing if I'm using for example I'm contrasting in weight as well and I'm using a sans serif like for example Garamond or Cormorant Garamond whole different thing okay but if you use a sans serif like I used at the beginning it's just too subtle just don't do it do bold or change color or do something else to emphasize the word do like a little underline if you want or just like a little thing here but don't do italics okay now I am showing you this example because <laughs> you know when we see designs it's not only about the things that we see that they did well but also about the things that they didn't do that matter right in this example one thing I didn't do here is I use italics okay so if I go to the examples that are my favorite ones right at least the ones that I like um, I do consider that none of the examples that I would show you would use sans serif italics like this website or Angelo as well doesn't used use sans serif italics okay serif italics from time to time like for example here he uses a sans serif sorry a serif italic see here he uses a serif italic but um, I haven't seen him use a sans serif italic and if he does I wouldn't recommend it anyways okay tip number nine avoid lots of text without any visuals okay this is what you want to do okay so this is an award-winning website by immersive garden and in this particular part of the website they included icons with little text so this is what you want to do okay a little paragraph icons a visual on the back some subtitles here and quite a few hierarchies and a supporting visual that helps me scan the content okay now on the same website it's interesting that they included all of this text our ethics and compliance framework and they kind of included four paragraphs here without any supporting visuals now how can you support visuals here well probably you would need to get into the content right and not just throw text in this layout but get into the content and for example say okay they are mentioning Singapore and some countries right in some regions so you could create logos or include logos here of those regions to visualize what I'm telling you on the paragraph so very easy way of doing it right like 
just like they did for the icons, they could include visuals here to support the message. So you want to avoid lots of text like this and make sure that you include supporting visuals and make it as infographic as possible. Okay. Tip number 10, contrast typefaces. And when I say contrast, I mean go extreme with the contrast. Okay. So let me give you an example. So this website, I think does a great job with the choice of typefaces. Take a look, they use sans serif, serif, sans serif again. Okay. So this is one way to contrast the typefaces. The other thing they did is huge, medium, small. The other thing they did is compressed, extended, compressed again. And lastly, they did bold, light, bold. Here, the same contrasting principles apply, but the only thing that differs here is that they have the same size. But still, you can see that even at the same size, they have such a high contrast between each other that they work really, really well together. Try to go as extreme as possible, and I can guarantee that you will see amazingly powerful visuals. One last time, if you haven't downloaded it yet, go grab the Golden Canon Grid, a free course with five secrets to compose beautiful layouts. Link is going to be below. And remember that if you're ready to build a six-figure web design business, create work you're proud of, and finally feel confident in your pricing and direction, book a one-to-one -one strategy call with me and let's see if the Bone Club is the right step for you. That's it for today. Hope you found this valuable, my friend. And as always, let's bridge the gap one pixel at a time.